Brad by Josh Gross. Brad was an imposing presence. The kind of guy I imagined I would meet at a bar over a game of pool if I could go to bars to play pool. He oozed confidence. This was because he had proclaimed himself king of all that he could see. Even here in juvenile lockup, he still saw himself as royalty. And as royalty, it was easy to exude confidence. It didn't even matter whether or not anyone else treated him as such, although most did. Because as king, his opinion was the only one that mattered. His imposing presence extended beyond just his attitude. Brad was six foot two, wide at the shoulders, with bright red hair and a full beard at the age of 17. He kept a towel draped around his neck as if he'd perpetually just finished lifting weights. There was always a toothpick in his mouth. Where he came across the contraband toothpicks had always been a mystery, but they were a very effective tool to establish an air of superiority. However, the most definitive thing about Brad was that he was full-blooded Irishman, and he wasn't at all shy about it. The Irish can drink and fuck and fight better than anyone else in the world, and I'm as Irish as they come. What else is there in life, Brad would boast to anyone who dared to be incarcerated in his presence. He would lean back in his plastic lawn chair with his thumbs grasping his shirt, tugging on imaginary suspenders as if he were Mark Twain relaxing on the deck of a riverboat. And that makes us the best in the world. He really just recycled those three nuggets of bravado. It might have been more convincing had he diversified his portfolio of cultural superiority. Personally, I thought he was making a good argument the Irish were also the best braggarts going. But no matter the topic, Brad made ethnicity a part of it. He liked to compare, mostly so he could show why the Irish were the best. The Irish can do whatever they please. Who's going to stop us? You can't outdrink us? Sure as hell can't outfight us, and we fuck enough to raise one hell of an army. We could conquer the whole damn world. Who's going to stop us? Obviously, the legal system had been overlooked in this line of logic. Now, Brad either really liked to pick on me or to argue with me. I was never sure which. Sometimes it was like a pigtails in the inkwell situation, as if he liked to try to dominate me to have affection or camaraderie. But, whatever the reason, I never cared for being picked on, and I pushed back at every opportunity. However, since he was twice my size, all I really had against him was my Jewish wit, which, to make a tired analogy, takes to an argument like a fish to water. Or to make a racist analogy, it takes to an argument like an Irishman to a bottle of whiskey. So we usually turned to arguing, which was fine. We had to pass the time somehow. The Jews can write, produce, and direct better than anyone else in the world, I would joke, mocking his cultural pride. I really couldn't care less. It was just fun to argue with so exuberant an opponent. <laughs> Who cares, Brad would snort defiantly. The only movies worth watching are about drinking, fucking, and fighting, and that is Irish territory. Now, no one else in this place could have gotten away with swearing and boasting quite as loudly as Brad did. He'd been in McLaren for a long stretch on some sort of sex offense. I'd never found out which one. But it was long enough for the staff to recognize him as nothing but a loud-mouthed braggart. Exactly the kind of guy they met after work over games of pool at bars. They almost seemed to find his bravado as entertaining as he did. The Vikings, I said to him one day. Football was on the television at the time, which made the connection in my brain. The Vikings were better at drinking, fucking, and fighting than the Irish. <laughs> Yeah, well, there aren't any more Vikings, he said. Well, those are casualties of drinking, fucking, and fighting, my friend. Well, that doesn't mean... Now, the Vikings used to get drunk, have sex on the dinner table, at feasts, in between fights. Now, the Irish may drink and fight, or drink and fuck, but they don't do all three at once like the Vikings. Brad hooked his thumbs into his imaginary suspenders, and he snorted off to the dorm room, if he'd be away from me, my Jewish insolence. He never spoke to me again. I've always thought that meant that I won. Thank you.